The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call to the Leader of the House. Order. I call the Leader of the House. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Well, Mr Deputy Order. Speaker, of course the Labor Party wants to blow up the Parliament. That is the playbook of the opposition. That's the playbook Order. of the Labor Party for the last five years. You would expect them to come Order. into the House, and they have, uh, following the, uh, the usual uh, mantra, suspension of standing orders, a fire and brimstone speech from the Leader of the Opposition, a not so fire and brimstone speech from the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, Mr Speaker, but you'd expect them to want to blow up the House. They want us to all be focusing. Uh, Happy New Year to you too, by Order. the way, Member. For, I'm surprised to see you here, but I'm delighted that you're here to be part of this discussion. No, I am. I'm, I'm delighted to see you here, and Happy New Year to you. Um, Rosh Hashanah. So, Mr Speaker, you'd expect Labor to come into the House, block Order. the Parliament, Members. a whole lot of confected outrage about uh, what's been going on the last month. Uh, but you've got to admire their chutzpah, Mr Speaker, particularly the Leader of the Opposition's chutzpah. Because a lot of these members on the other side of the House, they come from a government, an opposition, a Labor Party, that changed their leader in five years' time from Kevin Rudd to Julia Gillard to Kevin Rudd. When they were in opposition, they had Kim Beasley, they had Simon Crean, they had Kim Beasley again. They even tried Mark Latham, who they now completely reject as a member of the Labor Party. Uh, then they went to Kevin Rudd, Mr Speaker. They were a party to change their leader very routinely, and I agree with them. I agree with them that changing the leader is not the right thing to do. The Australian public are quite rightly most Order. disconcerted with what's occurred, and I do think I agree that the last 10 years of politics in Australia, the instability that was initiated by the Labor Party from 2007 to 2013, was the wrong way to treat the Australian public. It was the wrong way to behave, Mr Speaker, and now Labor says they had to do it. But they began, they began the process that has led Order. to this 10 years of instability in Australia after the 11 and a half years Order. of stability by noise. the Howard government. So we had 11 and a half years of stability in the, the Howard the government, Mr. Mr. Speaker, following relative instability in the Hawke and Keating governments, the Fraser government, of course, we had the aberration that was the Whitlam government, and before that we'd had 21 years of continuous power from the coalition. And Labor created this very unfortunate atmosphere in Australian politics in the last 10 years where changing the leader became Order. de rigueur in Australian politics. And it's the wrong thing to have done. And I agree with the Australian public that what they want is stability. They want a calm, Order. The methodical member for government in Australia that is getting on with the job. And coming from the Leader of the Opposition, it is particularly galling to be lectured about stability and unity, Mr Speaker. Because in Paul Kelly's book, Triumph and Demise, on Bill Shorten, or on the Leader of the Opposition, I should say, Paul Kelly lined him up. He said the distrust between Rudd and Shorten was intense and enduring. The Gillard camp was contemptuous of Shorten, considering him weak and duplicitous. Neither side trusted him, and neither side revised its view, Mr. Speaker. And of course, that is the truth about the Leader of the Opposition. Neither side trusts him in the Labor side. Nobody trusts him amongst the Australian public. The only people that trust him to follow what he says he'll do is the CFMEU and John Setka, Mr Speaker. Order. The reality is that in two weeks, the new Prime Minister, after only two weeks, is the preferred Prime Minister in Australia. How upsetting that must be to the Labor caucus, Mr Speaker. How, how upsetting that must be to the Labor caucus. Because even in polls that show the government trailing the opposition very seriously, and there's no point in gilding the lily, that is certainly the case Order. in the current the published for polling. Kingston. Even in that published polling that shows the Labor Party well ahead of Order. the government, the leader of the opposition is not the preferred prime minister in this country. In two short weeks, in two short weeks, the member for Cook has so put his stamp on the prime ministership. 
that he is the preferred Prime Minister uh, in this country, and that must be making the Labor Party hard heads of the caucus and the union movement scratch their heads and think uh, it's possible they could lose this next election, an election which the Labor Party thinks they already have in the bag, an election where the Leader of the Opposition is already sizing up the size of the curtains in the Prime Ministerial suite because he's so certain that he's going to be the Prime Minister of Australia after the next election. Well, I've got news. I've got news for the Labor Party. I've got news for the Labor Party. We're getting on with the job on this side of the House. We are getting on with the job. Order. <laughs> Whether it's creating over a million jobs, Mr Speaker. Creating over a million jobs. Growth last week, according to the national accounts, the highest level of growth in the G7, Mr. Speaker. The highest Order. level There's of far growth too much in the G amongst G7 nations. Because the policies of this government, the, the policies of the former Treasurer, now the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister, uh, have been driving economic growth in this country, creating growth, creating jobs. This, this government, Mr. Speaker, has got the runs on the board. This government, Mr. Speaker, has reduced income tax for, for personal income tax in Australia. For average families struggling to make ends meet, we are reducing income tax for those families. We are reducing the property for tax Griffin. for small businesses. We are driving small and medium enterprises in this country to reinvest in their own businesses, to create the jobs that are driving the economy. We have record levels of infrastructure spending right across the nation in roads, in bridges, in new airports, in defence industry infrastructure, in uh, bases, $75 billion worth of infrastructure spending, uh, according to the new minister, Mr Speaker, and he's going to get the opportunity to keep expanding on that and outlining that infrastructure spend. That's helping to create jobs and growth in the Australian economy, unlike the Rip Van Winkle years of the Labor Party uh, from 2007 to 2013. We're getting electricity prices down. They've already started coming down in certain markets around Australia, including in South Australia and Queensland, Mr Speaker. And we are going to be focusing like a laser beam on electricity prices, like on electricity prices with the new minister. Uh, the member Order. for Hume is focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's bringing down electricity prices. And we're going to make the states focus on the reliability of energy supply in this country, Mr. Speaker. And national security. The member for Dixon, the Members minister for left. Home Affairs, is continuing to support our border security, and he'll answer questions about that later today. How we dealt with the latest boat arrival, but for five years. We have stopped the boats in this country completely reversed, completely reversed the record under the Labor Party, Mr. Speaker, where there were 50,000 arrivals on over 800 the boats. For there were thousands Morton. of children in detention. When we came into power, Mr. Speaker, we had to get children out of detention. When the Howard government lost power, I think there were six children in detention, or even five children in detention, Mr. Speaker. And we have stopped the boats. We have defended our borders. We are investing in national security, a $200 billion investment in our defence capability, the largest builder of our military capability in our peacetime history, Mr Speaker, after the years of labour when spending on defence was reduced to 1.56 per cent of GDP, the lowest level since 1938, the lowest level since the last year of appeasement under labour. We are repairing the damage. We're repairing the damage, Mr. Speaker, that was done by the Labor Party in defence. We are Order. balancing the budget. We have a path back to surplus. And a strong economy and a strong budget means we can invest in the things that Australians regard as important, like the, the, the pharmaceutical benefit scheme, like listing new drugs on the PBS that couldn't be done under Labor because there wasn't the money, Mr. Speaker. So here we are debating a Labor motion to suspend standing orders to demand that we have more chaos, to try and break the furniture, to rip up the place like a CFMEU annual general meeting, Mr Speaker. The member for Watson. not having anything to do with it, Mr Speaker. We are going to keep getting on with the job. We are going to focus on the things that people, that people regard as important, reducing taxation, supporting families, raising wages, budgeting this, uh, balancing the budget 
investing in infrastructure, national security, protecting our borders and the essential services that people like the farmers right now need all around Australia because of the drought. Mr. Speaker. Our response to the drought is about using the funds that we've managed to salt away as a government by having a balanced budget uh, process to support the essential services Australians Order. need. Order. The time allotted for this debate has expired.